and hello again. Um, I'd like to continue this mini-series on uh, canyon lands. And uh, first, uh, let's have a look at some of the images we've created so far. Let's go to the browse uh, feature under the file menu. And uh, that, let, that will let you browse through the file system and look for images by their icons. There's some small icons, or large icons, or just looking at the details with uh, some date and size information as well. And um, let's see, for instance, this one here. Let me double click that one and load that in. And so what you see here is a rendering that was done in the Ray Tracer, Puppy Ray. Currently still under development. This is a alpha version, somewhere between alpha and beta. Uh, we're still a couple of months away from release. Uh, so right now this is Memorial Day, end of May 2013. And uh, we anticipate releasing this sometimes in um, maybe August, September more likely. Uh, there's a lot of other things we want to do in version 9. But uh, this is one of the exciting ones already at this point. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, start uh, playing with that and sharing some of the joy. Um, let's see perhaps uh, what else we can do with that. I mean, obviously we have a render here, fairly strong telephoto <coughs> zoom level. And maybe we'd like to add, uh, I don't know, a sun here, or uh, let's see, we have some of the, um, the Nova options. Let's take 16 star and maybe a small bloom and apply that. So now what you'd like to do probably here is to create a Nova like so. So that could be useful for a quick, uh, almost like a cartoonish style, um, stylized display. Um, you know, in fact, if we, if we want to reduce this, uh, the number of colors to make it more of a cartoony look, uh, perhaps even do an edge detection thereafter as well. Let's see what we can do for that. Let's go undo that and work on something like photographic or maybe I think some of the sharpen tools, art sharpen might help. Um, there's a couple of uh, sh sharpen tools here and this one has also a little bit of a color reduction side effect. So that actually kind of works to the advantage if you want to do that. Um, another Another filter that might be useful is uh, in the color category, uh, posterizing. And that essentially will let you go through just very few colors and make it quickly sort of a poster look. So you can uh, perhaps then also, uh, perhaps first actually do something like a conversion to grayscale, exposing this through a particular lens color lens green for instance and uh, let's see what else we get to uh, perhaps oh let's store this quickly here store image and uh, perhaps also do a convolution filter for edge detection and um, that actually we might want to let's do an undo that control Z and do another type of edge detection maybe the Sobel a little bit better and uh, we might want to invert that image invert where do we have that there it is um, so that could be superimposed with the original image a um, couple of ways to do that if you click the original image we had stored then the old the the edge lines go away so let's undo that and store this first um, there you go so now we have the two lines the two images here this one and this one and how do we combine these two together well, there's a couple of different ways. You can load one into the swap buffer and the other one is here in the main buffer. So you could go and uh, put this one here, for instance, into the swap buffer. That would be under the image menu and uh, copy to the swap image, right? And then load this one here. So now we have, we are looking at the main buffer, as you see here in the upper left uh, title bar. But uh, if you combine, if you click on the big thumbnail here, it combines the two together. And uh, so you have the, the black lines multiplied to the uh, image that's in the swap buffer underneath it. And so that's, that's one way that you could perhaps uh, do a little bit of a combination with a cartoony style with the edges or outlines showing. Uh, there's actually, when you right click on that and you show the, uh, the modes, the layers blending mode, there's many different ways that you can combine those. So that might not necessarily be the best. You can, uh, you can find a couple of other 
And we have a tutorial on that that we did long ago um, to combine that in, in other ways. So let's say there's what's this, less than, yeah, lots of different styles and combinations that you can get out of that. Now, um, one thing I want to really focus on in this tutorial is how do we get the sky there in the first place? Right, if you look at uh, some of the images like this one here, this one has a nice little rosy tint to the sky and um, we actually have kind of uh, yeah clouds there right so these were done these clouds were th this is basically from the sky dome and uh, that was used during the puppy ray, ray uh, rendering so what i'd like to do is just show how to create that kind of sky in the first place uh, where do we need it in Puppy Ray? You know, in Puppy Ray, it, currently it looks for something in the custom brush. So you will need to load that into the custom brush to that image to actually have Puppy Ray make use of it for the sky dome. Um, but uh, how do we actually create that sky in the first place? What sky image did I actually use? You know, because I mean, you you may not notice it a whole lot when you have a finished image with something like this here with the addition of some Mystic Vision. You see the the ray the shadow cast um, and then the sun also there so that sort of thing uh, takes the attention and, and you know lets you focus on that but um, the the fact is there is still a little subtle uh, pink or reddish tint from the clouds in the sky and that that adds to the overall mood and so let's uh, let's have a look at how to create some of these guys the sky dome so what I did is I started, um, let's start with an image that's about a square. Uh, let's go with something like this here. Let's go to image and oh, let's, let's make it fairly large, 1600 by 1600. All right, and so I can zoom out a little bit. It's a fairly large image here. It won't fit on the entire screen at 100%. If I click here, you only see part of it. Um, what I'll do is I'll render the plasma noise in there, go to the filters and render and select plasma noise and when you select plasma noise you'll get that initial display you can make it a little bit uh, smaller a little bit bigger uh, and okay that all right so i do have some plasma noise here now and uh, let's go just for the habit store that store this in a copy of that and we probably won't need it anymore but let's just still keep it aside and uh, what i'd like to do now is to um, let's see. All right, so we're going to use this in the 3D designer to create a sky. We've actually seen that in another tutorial, but I just wanted to emphasize that and perhaps look at some other ways to, to work with it specifically for the purpose of then using it in Puppy Ray as a sky dome. So um, here's what we did. We went into filter, transform, and 3D designer. Right. And in 3D Designer, no surprise, this looks like a 3D terrain, right? So now what, one thing I did is I, first of all, I moved this, the light to the back there. And then I tilted it in such a way that it looks like I'm underneath it. So that gives me a first look at, uh, as if it's over my head for the sky. Then I changed the color. And, and you know what, let me un cancel this and move this image a little bit to the right so we got better look at everything in the user interface too. So let me go back to that. It remembers the most recent settings. So going back into 3D Designer, I'm already there. Let's see, uh, I scale it in X and I scale it in Z. So that gives me more coverage. I can also move back a little bit to see still a lot more. And then that way it can actually get, go down to the horizon also. And let's say, okay, something like this. Now I want the, the, the bright spots, the specularity to show a little bit more. So I'm gonna reduce the hardness so that I get, I do get more of that specular, but I want that to be that, that uh, vermilion red, the reddish uh, deep uh, Monument Valley sunset colors. <laughs> uh, so that gives me already a little bit of the cloud being uh, lit underneath it from the sun that's setting. And um, there's some other things I need to do, uh, of course, is make sure I don't have too much of that ex uh, extrusion there. But one thing I particularly want is 
to uh, to make it look like we also have some holes where we see the clouds or the sky behind it, right? So the, the covers the coverage is not 100% on the clouds. So what I'll do is first of all I set the color of the clouds. Let's say we, we're going to use some sort of a bluish tint, and it might help you know up front what color you're going to use. Uh, in your composition. When you use this as a sky dome, that color is in there. But we don't see through it here yet, right? So what I'm going to do now is to uh, to make punch some holes through that by simply using the, the fog, that's the ground fog. So the ground fog is one that goes by elevation and if I set the, uh, I can set the lower or the higher limit. Let's set the higher limit. And what you see is as I'm dragging and if expanding this value, uh, it's raising the fog. Because, you know, think about it, I, I pitched it over. If I had it, if I didn't have it pitched over, it would be like this. And, you know, maybe with a big extrusion, that's your terrain right there. And so if I, if I look at what the fog is doing, it's coming from underneath it. And I can also raise the lower limit and make it even more, uh, more, more like a very thick fog layer, right? Well, look at what that looks like if I flatten it. Right, goes to that, and then tilt it back, change the pitch to make it look like so. So now I'm having, I'm looking at clouds, and there is a little bit of a, um, let's see, we, we have some lights over here. We could actually put that in the back if we wanted to have some moonlight on the side. Um, we could have some, let's say, uh, the light range. Yeah, maybe some whitish colors there too. Uh, so all sorts of different controls for how much light we actually get there. Uh, the specularity itself is really what we should emphasize a little bit here. And so that could be something like so. Perhaps the color is a little bit too purplish. Let's give it more reddish. And there you go. And even move it farther a little bit down. So here's where you work with the altitude. Um, and also with the zenith, so bring it closer or farther away from the center. This is close to the middle, and then the altitude will bring it right down to the ground or you know, bring it up higher. And then that way you get a little bit more of that uh, specular reflection on those clouds a little bit everywhere. Uh, now you can also add some fog to that, that's distant fog, and that will make it go away into the, the haze of the sky. Maybe we don't need that quite yet. And, and really what I want is to have a sky dome that's not already in this perspective look. So what I need to do is essentially then tilt it back to something like this orientation. This is what I'm going to use. I'm going to reduce the opacity. I don't need that much extrusion here. Let's make it a little bit flatter. Um, let's get the azimuth. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe we need it still on one side something like this, but not that intense. So we use the brightness a little bit, because that would be too much. Uh, let's uh, get the brightness on the specularity down as well. Uh, let's uh, reduce a little bit. We don't want those sharp edges. We want some soft edges on the clouds. There you go, more like so. Okay, and uh, let's see. Oh, we need to basically have it cover the entire sky. We can always crop to that a little bit later. I mean, we have a very large area to work with, 1600 pixels. So let's see if we want a little bit closer. Maybe we can adjust the, the size. Um, something like this here. Let's go with some more. Click and drag. Uh, I think I'm still at an angle here. You can see I'm having some angular uh, not parallel here. Let's see if we can get close to parallel. It doesn't have to be exact science here. Let's stay on the artisty side here. Um, something like so. There you go. That'll be good enough. And uh, we can perhaps even change the, the camera uh, zoom so that we don't have too much perspective distortion. And then we can actually move just back until we get a nice view of everything, kind of in a square. So uh, even if we crop out a little bit too much. All right, so let's keep this, and that will give us, or perhaps, actually, we need to move the zenith or the altitude, probably the zenith off a little bit. Yeah, I want it on the edge here. All right, so it will look like it will look more like the sun is really setting down there somewhere. Um, something like so. Okay, let's start with this. Okay, let's work with this. Let's okay that, and so let's have a look at the image we've got. Uh, 
So this is a this is a great image for a sky dome. Now we might want to even make it um, what do we call it um, seamless. So that's another thing because we could then possibly use it for other things that are tiled and replicated and we get seamless behavior along that, no edges. So uh, let's do two things. Let's store this one as a custom image, right? Uh, as, a, as an image, let's store it as an image, uh, keep that aside and handy. And then um, there's also, we keep this as a brush, right? So when we do this, we'll have it as a brush and uh, we'll do that right here. Store, uh, actually first uh, store, uh, grab it as a brush, use this image as a brush, and now that it's the custom brush, we can store it as a brush. All right, so we have a safe copy of that as well. And the idea is that we can now use that image as the sky dome. That's basically the magic behind it, is that we can now use that as a sky dome for Puppy Ray. And so let's, uh, Let's see what that might look like. If we actually go and create something different for the ground, the elevation might, maybe we'll do some sort of a grid pattern, uh, stylized render, um, where do we do grids, or let's do the, like the checkerboard, let's do the checkerboard. All right, so here's the checkerboard, and keep it something like, uh, not too big, not too small and color-wise something dark and something bright so something like so there that will do all right so we have a grid pattern and let's make um let's keep it really crisp really crisp edges no transition there no smoothing and uh yeah let's let's put that into puppy ray so again this is still a beta uh, ignore this it says halo 8 here in the menu but it's really a beta beyond halo 8 this is not available from here point from this point on what you're going to see is not available yet. Um, this is going to be version 9 at some point. So I'm going to use my secret handshake to access the experimental features and launch Puppy Ray. And you see already in the preview here um, our tiled pattern here. And uh, let's go open everything and explore a little bit uh, more of a wide angle. And there you see it. Here's our sky that we have created, our tiled. Um, beautiful sky set and we can go to perhaps change the heading and look in a different direction we can look at change the pitch and look up and some more and so here is a seam actually we didn't make this one seamless right remember we didn't make this one seamless so because it's used as a sky dome it's wrapped around in a circular fashion all around and of course we see the seam from one end to the other end so that would be actually a good one to say, uh, do a seam, uh, create a, a seam on that image. Let's go do that. Let's put this one in here. Oh, wait, let me go back quick and store this image because I want to reuse that later. Um, so let's go and put this one in and turn, make it seamless. So let's go to image. Now we, we have it in the custom brush already, right? Remember we stored this in the custom brush. You can actually preview it, POV, and then you'll see you have it here in the custom brush. Um, but the the thing is, we, we really, that's the one we need to make seamless. So you can actually do that directly from the brush menu. Go to the brush, the brush menu, and you'll see make seamless. That's the original make seamless feature. We had that here first before we even put it on the image uh, buffer side. So you could do it right there. You could, uh, in fact, uh, increase a little bit to how much overlap you want on itself and use the, use the brush. Uh, and also keep the original size if you want to keep it and it doesn't get smaller or something. And so there it is. Now you want to store that brush. That's a new brush in which the image is seamless. Right. So you see there's a difference now between this one and this one. Let's minimize this. We'll use this one here. Um, and that's the image that we will use for our puppy ray. So let's go put this image back in. And let's go to um, with my puppy ray. Puppy. There you go. Puppy ray. And so now we have no longer that seam that we used to have. Now, we still have a pole, and that's something we can address too with a Lua script. Um, and we may have even a non-Lua version of that. I'll have to go dig around for that a little bit. Maybe I'll cover that in another tutorial. But uh, you can also do something about that pole if you uh, don't want to see that. All right, so let's say we will zoom in a little bit. 
and we uh, use the pitch to look around there. Uh, maybe we'll go down. Let's change the elevation in Z. Oops, that's too low. There you go. And um, there you have it. I mean, you can uh, perhaps actually position yourself a bit higher, pitch down. All right, and you still see that the sky. Let's, let's tilt our uh, camera here a little bit. There you go. And a little bit to the side. So you see now some of these verme vermilion colored clouds. Uh, one thing you can see is also the word the world size here, if we set it just to one, we see very little of the uh, tile. It's just one tile being shown. It's not being replicated anymore. Zero doesn't even show any of it. Uh, and then two uh, makes it go tiled a little bit more. And three is what I had earlier. And four, you can go higher. And five, and so it keeps going all around in uh, all around the camera. Uh, and you, you get to see, and it constantly tiles it. I mean, you can go where the light source is, and that's the bright area. But you can keep going in any ax in any, any direction, and eventually you're just not seeing any because there's no lighting there. Now, what one thing you might do is actually enable the the global illumination, and when you do that, you do get the sky to shine on this as well. So that's a, a great uh, way to to create this fancy little thing. Let's go and perhaps do a, a more of a high quality render. This is not the final render yet, but uh, let's go do a, a rate base on that. And, um, you know, that basically concludes this tutorial where I wanted to show you how you can create the sky dome with some of these fancy clouds and, and then put that into Puppy Ray or, you know, you can even use that in, in other ways, uh, compositing it um, with uh, doing some post work, or you could in fact uh, use that just as a mechanism with cloud C that are used in, uh, in a different program, you know, your favorite 3D program or whatever it is. So there it is, I'll leave that, I'll, I'll wait for a completion of the render and um, hope to see you soon in another video, another tutorial with uh, Project Dog Waffle, Pete Howler.